I'm not sure how that happened, unless this is like some sort of... No, I guess the mage just did it. The wizard did it. further away. Ow. Stop it. So many foes that came before him demanded Lord Hushar falls to your assault. It's defined to the last hissing, spitting, shouting obscenities at you. And his strength is not sufficient to allow him to continue his rude display for long. Also the stone floor and expires. What a rude cat. Howard. I'm going to kill you. This will transpire. Steel halberd, ten through forty. Blessed Van Braces. Take that. I don't need that. And I'll take this Gremlin one. Box is almost empty. Contains a few sheets of paper, a handful of feather quills. Only one of the pages contains has writing on it. It's a letter. To Hoshar. Hope you have not slain my messenger to obtain this letter. Tork is a valued servant, and I would be irritated by his loss. The horses in my organization wish to use the honeycomb for travel, to avoid the annoying interference of the Avernites. Since you control the territory, we are willing to give the appropriate respect in return for safe passage. Should this be agreeable, we can also discuss bounty for Avernite soldiers and loyal adventurers. Signed, Oricus. An upside-down crown has been drawn next to the signature. Okie dokie. Take that and that. And that. And save the game. Because I don't want to learn a spell from a spell book. Right? Torn up and covered with stains. You suspect that Hoshar had it brought here so that he could teach himself magic, failed, and lost his temper. It is a ruin, but one spell has stayed more or less intact. Terror. So we learn terror. I'm not sure if we can still train it up to level 3 if we learn it from a book. I guess I'll find out the next mage trainer, which would obviously be at the Tower of the Magi. Anyway, Hashar is now dead. And the game auto-saved. Is something gonna happen? Probably not. Stop by in here. Oh, I want to stop over here and tell her about me killing Hushar. Although I doubt she'll have a response. I didn't just find the bandits, by the way. I wiped them out and killed their leader, too. Ah, there is a response. Let's see what she has to say. Smile smugly. So you say. I learned not to give too much weight to the boasts of an adventure. Proper military expedition will be necessary, I am sure. Hopefully led by me.
Yes. Well, good luck. I'm sure there'll be freaking ghosts or rats or something in there by the time your military expedition shows up. Slurp. Durin. Sitting at the table eating a thin mushroom broth. He looks very thin. His home is quite humble. When you enter, he jumps out of his chair. You are the chance to earn some money. Welcome, traveler. I'm Doran. Would you like uh, food for the journey? Something to sustain you on the road? Any problems with the undead? Of course. And I can't afford bodyguards like some, so I sleep light and the first time I'm in trouble, I run into town. Let's see what you got. <gasps> fruit! There. I bought a fruit. And I'll eat it right in front of you. Nom. Got fruit. Ugh. Already taken care of, guys. Zombies. What is this? The Thorius Estate. A whole estate. And a giant rat. for a break. Well, it's got walls. Goodman Thorius. Are you a good man? The presence of foot passes for wealth in Avernum. This farmhouse is built from large solid stone walls with a bodyguard and solid wall outside. The furnishings inside are nice and the floor is made of actual wood. In the entry hall you are greeted by a large, elegantly dressed landowner. His clothes, like the furniture, and wood veneer are brought at great expense from the surface. His family must be very old and wealthy. It's not happy to see you. He sniffs the air and makes a face. Oh dear. Adventurers in my home. I do not want it said that Goodman Thorius makes a habit of dealing with such riffraff. Please depart. May I speak with you? Uh. Thorius looks around thinking that you might be speaking to someone else, then sighs. Ah, you were talking to me. No, you're uninvited in my home. You cannot speak with me, or my precious daughter. Please depart. I'm sure I'll get a quest somewhere that will send me back here, and then you'll be all the more the happy to talk to me, like the last rich landowner. Oh, goodness. Well, freaking excuse me, your fancy magical lock. Gauntlets and heavy boots. Oh. Hey. long side path. This used to be secret, by the way. In Avernum 2? This is the last time you could run around in this area. This used to be a big secret. Just one long secret tunnel. This side path that ran, ran from the south of the tower. Maybe I'll get a uh, far sight down here. Oh, I'm at the Tower Colony now. There's a few 
few human guards in Tower Colony. Their job is keeping the curious visitors, visitors out. Any real threats are dealt with by the wizards and their minions. You ever are welcome to explore the colony. The guard tells you that. If you want to know anything, you should ask Kellner. I have uh, something for Kellner. I think I avoided a lot of things by taking the X secret passage. Maybe there is no far sight. Uh, for the first time, you enter the Tower Colony, the cluster of small stone domes and towers in the shadow of the ruined Tower of the Magi. The Tower of the Magi was not the largest building in Avernum. That honor belongs to the castle, but it was argu arguably the most significant. It was the core of Avernum's magic power and knowledge. All the plants that make life in the underworld livable, the glowing fungus, the trees, the giant edible mushrooms, they were created here. The power that enabled your nation to fight off the Empire was built up here. Then the tower was destroyed. All of our knights know the story of Linda, the mad wizardess of the Triad, who summoned a demon and lost control of it. The magical storm this act unleashed could have destroyed much of Avernum. The summoned demon was, fortunately, defeated by a small band of adventurers. Uh-huh, I remember that. Since then, uh, Vernites have been dismantling the tower, scavenging magical books and equipment to form a new, more secure magical colony. Casual visitors are not welcome in the colony. You, on the other hand, are instantly and eagerly greeted by the guards at the gate. Someone has given them your description. You are told that Mage Kellner would like to see you. I suppose the bulk of the guards are, uh, golems. Who are you? You're an apprentice. Oh, hey, X. You're no longer in a secret room. You enter the Tower of X, one of Avernum's oldest, most powerful, and frankly, most eccentric wizards. He's currently casting a spell on a pile of bones which are resting on a ruined platform in the middle of the chamber. As you watch, fascinated, the shade slowly wa rises up from the bones. X opens its mouth, seemingly about to give the shade a command, but then one of the candles surrounding the platform goes out, and the shade takes a long, horrible hissing sound. Get him, X! Man, he summons experimental rats. Ow! Ow! Good grief. I am outclassed. Um. That works. Beware, beware! <laughs> Sticks the femur, looks at it closely, smells it, then he touches it with his tongue. Excellent! Not fresh at all. He's got a few scrolls out of his pocket and hands them to you. Gets, gets back to work. I don't even know what that was in relation to. Hey, X. Meet X the Enchanter, one of Avernum's most famed and mysterious figures. Impossibly old, extremely powerful, highly eccentric, probably mad. He looks like a bundle of bones held together by a thin layer of skin and a heavy web of magic. His eyes are bright and distant. A tiny bit of his mind is concentrating on you. The rest is wandering the realms unimaginable. He says, yes, yes, you are here. Wanting, wanting, always the wanting. Ask your queries. Uh, how long have you been in Vernum? All of it! All the years since the Empire cast me down, and the others. They are gone, but X remains. X will always remain. What do you do in the tower? Many, many things. More than before, since I shed the inconvenient need to sleep. Okay. So X is like a lich wearing a suit of skin, but he's supposedly benevolent. Study the arts of war, of botany, of casting things afar, and bringing them home. Art of War. Long have I studied what would be the greatest achievement, the spell to summon an anvil, and deposit it on the head of my foe from a height. It torments me still, but I will prevail. Working on this spell a long time? Very, very long time, since well before the Empire War, and yet no success. From a magical perspective, anvils are tricky objects. They have... They, but they have a certain purity that appeals to me. Uh, study botany. I create plants. New, wonderful.